so I would not be able to remember each and every name of the di dignitaries. And there's no point here also in trying to name everyone. So the dignitaries and the staff members of the CTA, Central Tibetan Administration, and the teachers, uh, lecturers, and students of uh, Menzi Kang, and the permanent residents of Dharamsala, as well as those who have come from around the, uh, from other places. Today we are commemorating or celebrating the 100th anniversary of Menzi Kang, which was founded by the 13th Dalai Lama, as the director of Menzi Kang has mentioned in his speech. Um, the Menzi Kang I mean, it was first founded in Jakburi on, by the 5th Dalai Lama. So we are celebrating Menzi Kang's founding anniversaries and we have come into exile and have gone through a very uh, sad uh, period in our history. And, but then we have worked hard and as part of our hard work after coming into exile, Mensikan was founded and over these many years we have been very transparent in, and not uh, selfish in our dealings. We have based ourselves on the understanding of the law of causality and worked hard. In 1959, uh, or and in the 1960s, we were more or less strangers. There were uh, organizations which were looking after refugees who were compassionate to us. We were at their mercy. And after 50 plus years, we, the Tibetans in exile, as a result of our hard work, today in the world, Tibet is known to have its own language, which, based on which we have a very profound, rich culture. And when it comes to, when we talk about culture, we basically have the ten different knowledges or sciences, five minor and five major, which, has, uh, which have come from India. And so in the minor subjects we have poetry and others, whereas in the major subjects or knowledges we have Sanskrit, learning Sanskrit, medicine, crafts and arts and Buddhism as well as epistemology. So with regard to Sanskrit, learning Sanskrit, it's only studied by few learned people. Regarding myself, I was supposed to have studied uh, the five major sciences. I studied uh, the Sanskrit Kalapa uh, tradition and from my late senior tutor Ling Rambuchi, but nothing is left now in my mind regarding this subject. And then regarding epistemology, it is something really uh, for many centuries, the Indian masters who have done lots of investigation through reasoning and logic, whether it, it's with the dealing with whether we are dealing with inner or in, uh, internal or external objects.
So they found it important, crucial to use logic and reasoning and uh, to understand things through inference. So in India, for thousands of years, there were great uh, Indian uh, logicians uh, from the Sankhya school of uh, philosophy who were also great philosophers. There are numerous of them. And then also from amongst the Buddhist scholars, practitioners, uh, in this Pali tradition, they do not have much uh, study of logic and reasoning, but they mostly resort to scriptural authority, whereas in the Sanskrit tradition, the uh, different subjects are established through reason, just as the Buddha has said, Oh, monks and scholars, just as a gold is tested by burning, uh, rubbing and cutting, likewise you should examine my teaching and uh, not accept it, accept it, but not out of your devotion to me. And therefore we find in the sutras, the words of the Buddhas, how certain things cannot be taken literally, which are called provisional teachings. And in the Madhyamaka Avatara by Chandra Kirti, he says that sutras such as Langara Avatara Sutra and so forth cannot be taken literally because they go against reason. And so, amongst all the different religious traditions, it is only the Buddha who has said that the followers, his followers, should not accept what goes against reason, even if it may be his own words. And therefore, Sanskrit tradition of Buddhism, the Nalanda tradition, emphasizes reason and logic. And there were great masters of logic and epistemology who have who had uh, rigorous um, debates with uh, non-Buddhist, classical Indian non-Buddhist scholars of other different philosophies. And so, because of these challenges posed by the non-Buddhist scholars, who were all, who were also logicians, the Buddhist scholars also have, were able to make progress in the presentation of Buddhism through logic. And the more progress the, Tibet, uh, more progress the Buddhists made, it also has helped the non-Buddhist scholars. So that was about epistemology. And so regarding this, in fact, it is a fact that the writings of masters like Dignaga and Dharmakirti, Indian masters, Maybe some Sanskrit texts are still extant, um, but the complete text on epistemology written by Indian masters uh, are in, is in the Tibetan language and not even in Sanskrit or Chinese or other languages. So it's not just left in the literature, um, translated from India, but Sakya Pandita, a Tibetan master of the Sakya tradition, wrote the treasury of logic, which is our epistemology. And so the followers of Dignaga and Dhammakirti such as uh, Tibetan masters like Chaba Chajasinghe and his disciples also took great interest in uh, logic and epistemology. And so, from amongst the five major sciences, uh, only the Tibetans took great interest and, uh, uh, in this subject. And so we, we can actually study logic and epistemology through, uh, through our own language without having to rely on other languages. So we have kept this study of logic 
alive in our great monastic institutions in the different religious uh, uh, traditions of Buddhism. And today, it is a fact that in the Geluk monastic institutions, this uh, study is kept alive by uh, the monks uh, rememorizing the root fundamental texts and then also um, going through, uh, going over the text uh, through rigorous debate, dialectical debate. And so the study of logic and epistemology is very much prevalent in our life. And in the great monastic institutions in South India, such as Saragat and Drepung, Tashilhambu, uh, and Tashilhambu monasteries. And then next, uh, regarding the crafts and arts, with regard to this, we even lack the skill to make even a small needle. So Tibetans used to be able to make uh, some um, form of nails, which were not so very uh, polished ones. And, uh, but then we have, all, of course, the handicraft, uh, uh, the art of making the uh, statues of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and ma Lamas. And uh, it is preserved in Nobolenka Institute here nearby Dharamsala. So there was one uh, person whose name was, so he was nicknamed the one hammer, the person with one hammer and one compass. Uh, and then uh, if we consider the art of uh, tanka painting as, uh, as art or craft, Kundal Lama Rinpoche used to tell me that uh, regarding this craft, uh, it can be external or internal. With regard to internal crafts, we, Kona Lama Rinpoche used to, to say that uh, we can actually consider Buddhism, uh, which helps in um, making transformation within the mind as a craft or a skill. Today, maybe there are uh, perhaps one billion Buddhists in the world, in China, there may be, uh, I mean, there, there are over four million, four hundred million Buddhists today. From amongst all the Buddhists today around the world, it's only the, the Tibetans who have in-depth study of the teaching of the Buddha and uh, also the practice of it. So we engage in the study of Buddhism through study and learning, hearing the teachings and also doing rigorous reflection on the teachings and then developing the experience through contemplation. And therefore, we are the custodians I mean, today of the, I mean, uh, we have kept the Nalanda tradition alive. And so this is only amongst us. This is amazing. Since coming into exile over 57 years now, I have met many Buddhists from different parts of the world, different Buddhist traditions. And from these meetings, what I have come to con uh, conclude is that the Tibetan Buddhist tradition is amazing, wonderful, which combines both study and practice. So I usually say this. Uh, I also told, talked about this in the south of India recently. So Buddhism, of course, spread the length and breadth of Tibet for centuries, over uh, or over a thousand years. In all parts of Tibet, Uzang come and 
Dome, the complete teaching of the Buddha, including Tantra, um, have spread, has spread. But most people in Tibet remain rather illiterate. They only uh, have blind faith in Buddhism. I usually say that if we wish to preserve uh, the Buddhism for a long time, we need to follow it in accordance with the, uh, the system of the beings with, uh, uh, beings with intellect, sharp intellect. Otherwise, if we resort to m mere blind faith without really using, uh, understanding the Dharma through logic and reasoning, the uh, Buddhism will not remain on in the world for long. So Tibetan, Tibetans mostly are Buddhists. But if you're asked what Buddhism is about, then you have, I mean, our people do not really have not much to say. And in the Himalayan regions, trans-Himalayan regions also, in the prayer to Yudol Yonden Gompo, which says that if you pray to him in one, uh, for one week, you'll have great spiritual feats. I don't believe in this. Even if you may uh, pray to the Buddha for months and years, nothing really happens if you really make transformation within yourself. I consider myself as a student of the uh, Master Nagarjun, uh, but I, uh, I do study his text, his writings. Even if you make prayer to Master Nagarjuna for weeks or months and years, no, for decades, Nothing really happens merely through prayer. You cannot, um, nobody can say that Yuto Yonden Gombo was greater than Nagarjuna. And so we need to study and understand the Dharma well rather than keeping a blind faith, saying that, oh, such and such thing will happen if you do this and that, without really re good reason. So. If we do not need to study Buddhism, we don't need the 300 plus volumes of Kanjur and Tenjur, the literature uh, translated from India. So Buddha himself has said that the, uh, regarding liberation, I cannot do much, but it's on your shoulder. And uh, Buddha also said that you can, uh, the Buddhas do not wash away the sins of sentient beings, nor do they take away the suffering and uh, shift their own realization, but by teaching the truth, the Buddhas help sentient beings. And therefore, to purify yourself of the negativities that are within our mind stream, we need to use uh, the de techniques to, to uh, overcome the um, Im impediments that are within our mind stream and uh, gain more knowledge. And so, uh, although we have the tradition of studying Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy in the great monastic institutions, I have urged the monastic institutions not to just be satisfied with the, uh, the traditional subjects, uh, but we should also learn that we should also learn the different subjects, modern subjects like science and uh, so forth. And by meeting with uh, also scientists and scholars from other traditions, and so if you belong to the Gelu, you should not just stay contented with uh, following that Gelu tradition, but you should also study the other traditions of Tibetan Buddhist, uh, Buddhism, such as Nyingma tradition, Sakya and Kagyu traditions. And similarly, it goes with the other uh, followers of these uh, other traditions, Nyingma, Kagyu and Sakya traditions. So we need to make further progress in our study, the manner of studying. Uh, and then the, with regard to Sova Rigpa, the art of healing or medicine, um, in, as it was said in the uh, director's, um, Menzikang's director's speech, in the 8th century, uh, King, the Tibetan Emperor, Tisung Detsen, invited 
different medical system uh, followers or practitioners of different medical systems from Persia and China and uh, India and so forth. So in the 8th century, if you look back, in that, at, at that time, if the Tibetans could convene such a kind of an international meeting of medical systems when they were not good facilities at that time, today when we have the medical, uh, the, the different facilities and opportunities uh, to meet with other t uh, medical systems and have discussions, we should do it. And uh, the medical system that we have is a synthesis of Chinese and Indian and Yunani and uh, the local Tibetan medicine. So today we are in the 21st century. So on top of the, what we already have, the traditional medical system, the ancient uh, uh, tradition that we have, we should also learn from the other medical systems such as which are based on scientific research and findings. So we, our doctors should not just be satisfied with what is taught in our scriptures, the Yushi, the four tantras, but we need to also do more investigation, analysis of the uh, herbs and so forth and then learn what is uh, beneficial uh, practically and with regard to the uh, neutralizing of uh, mercury, uh, it was done in Israel and also inside Tibet. So it is found that uh, through the uh, traditional practice, a technique, uh, scientifically it has been verified that, uh, verified that uh, uh, the mercury could be, um, then the mercury has been, uh, that is used in the Tibetan medicine, uh, are neutralized. So we should not just feel contented with what uh, uh, we have, the traditional medical system, and uh, we should take from other traditions as well. With regard to Buddhism also, I have been saying that in t while we were in Tibet, we rather remained narrow-minded. We have not paid attention to what was going on in the other parts of the world. And we should open ourselves up to the rest of the world and how see how we can make contribution to the world through the Buddhist tradition that we have. And we should also see how we can uh, make more uh, progress and uh, further developments. So I have been telling the medical people uh, that uh, we should study other traditions and scientifically test our medicines and so forth. So what is said in the medical texts should also be uh, verified through scientific uh, research and experiments and in this way other people also, other people also may will uh, find uh, I mean, have confidence in using Tibetan medicine. My uh, senior tutor Ken, uh, and my ordination master uh, used to say that an old uh, patient is himself or herself a doctor, so he knew uh, a lot about medicine as well because of his illness and uh, when it comes to er uh, emergency cases then the allopathic medicines are quite effective whereas Tibetan medicine is I mean, on the long run and um, in the long run Tibetan medicine if you could use it is very effective to heal so we have these different sciences or uh, fields of knowledge uh, which we should feel uh, proud of.
And so, because it's, these are found in our own language, Tibetan, therefore we could say that these are Tibetan um, fields of knowledge. So we should uh, uh, feel proud of them. So how to preserve these with regard to the monastic institutions, the, the, with regard to the inner science or Buddhist philosophy, the monastic institutions should do whatever is necessary to preserve and promote and expand on what we have. And with regard to medicine and uh, astrology, the Menzikang has done a great deal to serve. And there are many sick people in the Tibetan settlements where I have seen many uh, sick people, Tibetans. And so uh, it seems that uh, from the Department of Health as well as Menzi Kong seems to have neglected to a certain extent uh, these uh, needy and poor people. We may have um, had grand ceremonies and so forth and uh, we have had some kind of a glamorous kind of celebration, but uh, this glamorous uh, celebration should not be hollow without serving other needy and sick people. So we cannot just uh, give lip service. Perhaps it has worked so far uh, to a certain degree, but regarding myself, I am uh, already 80 uh, plus and uh, I may live for ten or another 10 or 15 years. And we, if you think that things will uh, be um, as it uh, would work, as it has worked so far, without much effort, and so it seems that uh, the standard of uh, education also has gone down. And so we need to see where we have uh, uh, our drawbacks. So we need to listen to other people and find out where we have made drawbacks, caused drawbacks and shortcomings, and so where we have neglected things. And then preventive measures are also very important. And in the monastic institutions also, it seems we are um, there are lots of neg uh, neglects. And from many quarters I hear this, and so we need to see what, uh, are, the, what are remedies we should apply, um, find. So I've met the abbots of the monastic institutions um, and told them, so we if, if we just stay uh, contented with what we already have, uh, things will not be good in the end. So that's all. Thank you.